Hi guys, it's Laura from How To Get Your Shit Together and in this video I am kicking off the kimono category of the KonMarie method. I recently decluttered my toiletries and it reminded me that though the question is does this spark joy, there are actually two different types of joy and I think it's important to understand both of them. In this video I will be discussing what to do with things that don't spark joy but that you still feel that you need as well as sharing my progress and some before and after pictures and also I will be answering one of your questions which is should you keep a few things as spares? Let's go! toiletries we meet again. One of my big challenges with this category was that all of these things have labels. So she talks in the book about how different labels and colors and things can just add to the visual clutter and I have definitely found that to be the case. Bottles of different shapes and sizes, different colors, lots of text, all of that stuff like no matter how neatly I store it, it still looks messy. Right now I have just open shelving for storing them but I think after we move I'm going to find a cabinet with a door that I can close and also some bottles that all look the same so that I can decant stuff into them just to add a bit of cohesion. What have you done to me Con Marie? When I tackled this subcategory the first time around I was horrified by how much stuff I had. I don't really wear any skincare products, so no cleansers, serums, toners, scrubs, none of that. And the only makeup I wear is eyeliner and mascara. Literally, that's it. So where the feck is all of this stuff coming from? My downfall was that I used to work in retail, specifically health and beauty, and I had staff discount. So whenever there was a special offer on, you know, shampoos or deodorants or any of those sort of staples, I would buy a bajillion of them. And this is no word of a lie. I have not had to buy shampoo, shower gel or dental floss since before I finished this subcategory of the KonMari method the first time around. That was a year ago. Still, I ended up getting rid of over a third of my toiletries the first time around, most of which was, you know, travel sizes and nail polishes. And in the intervening year, I have naturally just used up a lot of stuff. So how did I feel about the amount of stuff this time? Still horrified. I still have enough shampoo, shower gel and dental floss to last me another year. I'm saving a fortune. But yes, there was still a lot less than last year, so it didn't take me nearly as much time to go through it. All told, it took me about an hour to pull everything out, go through it, dust things down, and then put everything back. Not bad. Once it was all done and literally dusted, I had cut out about 10% of my toiletries. Not a huge amount, admittedly, but better than nothing. I think the reason it was so hard to eliminate a large chunk of this is because no matter how horrified I am by the amount of stuff I have, the fact of the matter is that I use that stuff on a very regular basis. And its stay in the house is only temporary, so in that sense it's a bit of a strange subcategory. But it's a great lesson in how there are different types of joy, the one that brings you great happiness and the one that just adds a little bit of convenience to your life. For me, not everything sparks joy in the oh this is so wonderful and I love it so much sort of way, but more in the this will keep me clean and I will finish it soon sort of way. Do cotton pads make me deliriously happy? Nope. But do I think it's handy to always have a pack? Yes, very much so. So when deciding whether or not something sparks joy, remember that there is the joy of happiness and the joy of convenience. Now I think the former should take precedence, but the latter is still important if you find yourself left with nothing. Start by only keeping things that spark joy in the happy sense. But if after that you find yourself in a bit of a pickle because you have decluttered all of your pants, then move on to the second type of joy and just keep the minimum of things that you would need to make your life easier or so you don't have to go naked. So 
So that brings me to a question I received from Emma over on the Facebook page. Hi Emma. She was wondering whether getting rid of toiletries would be wasteful and if she should keep some as spares. If you are in the same situation, ask yourself, when was the last time you actually used that product? If you don't really like it at all and you're only keeping it around in case your preferred product runs out, just get rid of it. I can say with confidence that one, you are not going to let yourself run out of that preferred product. And two, even on the off chance that you do, you're still not going to use the spare product if you genuinely do not like it. There's no joy there. You'll just go out and buy more of the stuff that you prefer as soon as you get a chance. If it's something that you don't necessarily dislike, you know, maybe you have a preferred product, but you're not really fussed in the grand scheme of things, then maybe keep one as a spare if you honestly will use it up and you have done so in the past, or if it just makes you a little bit happier, a little bit calmer to have a spare on hand. For me, I'm a bit meh on toiletries. You know, I have three or four shampoos that I use that all do a good job of cleaning my hair. One of them smells better, I prefer the smell of that one, but I kept all of them because at the end of the day, I will use them all. I'm not really arsed which one of them cleans my hair. So ask yourself, if you ran out of your preferred product, would you happily use up the spare until it was all gone? Or would you rush out and replenish your preferred product? That is your answer. Also weigh up the joy of dumping or donating the product versus the joy of actually using it. Would you be happier if you could just let it go? As a good rule of thumb, if in doubt, throw it out. So that is a wrap on another category of the KonMari method. The most exciting part for me is that I know that I will be naturally whittling it down even more as time goes on just by using stuff up. I'm also pathetically excited at the prospect of having everything in matching bottles. <sighs> Feel free to mock me mercilessly in the comments. But while you're there, let me know what is the most amount of one item from the toiletries category that you have. Me, I had and still have six bottles of shampoo and I had 21 nail polishes. I now have 19. Your turn. Thanks so much for watching guys. Give the video a big old thumbs up if you liked it and hit the red subscribe button below if you haven't already and you want to follow my Marie progress. I'll have my Marie playlist linked in the description box for you as well as my ultimate Marie checklist. Go pick up that PDF. I will be back next week to smash some myths about minimalism. I will be talking about how much stuff is too much and whether minimalism... Minimalism? Minimalism and whether minimalism is even possible with children. Until then, girl, me la mahagrev, agus fekimishiv shikalua. Slan!